The issue of the origins of the Indo-Europeans is as old as the discovery of the Indo-European language family itself over 200 years ago. Until recently, the two most prominent hypotheses were the so-called Anatolian and the Kurgan hypothesis. According to the former, the Indo-European language family originated in Anatolia and spread throughout Eurasia alongside agriculture from about 9,000 years ago. According to the latter, these languages first appeared in the Pontic Caspian steppe of southern Ukraine and Russia and were originally spoken by nomadic steppe pastoralists, who rapidly expanded across the Eurasian continent during the Bronze Age. In the light of linguistic, archaeological and genetic advances of the past two decades, the Anatolian hypothesis gradually fell out of favour and a steppe origin of the Indo-European language family appeared increasingly likely. That is until in 2023, a paper by Hegarty et al. called Language Trees with Sampled Ancestors Support a Hybrid Model for the Origin of Indo-European Languages was published. In this paper, Hegarty and his co-authors suggest a kind of compromise between the Anatolian and the Kurgan hypotheses, and their findings were recently partially confirmed by a 2025 study by Lazares et al. titled The Genetic Origin of the Indo-Europeans. In this video, I will be taking a look at both of these studies and comparing them to the two original hypotheses of the origins of the Indo-European language family. I will also highlight the arguments in favour and against these two theories in order to furnish an understanding of how this new hybrid hypothesis can potentially alleviate the pitfalls of both of the original approaches. First up, the Anatolian hypothesis. As mentioned previously, according to the Anatolian hypothesis, the Indo-European languages originated in Anatolia. This view had first been developed by the British archaeologist Colin Renfrey in the late 1980s. According to this theory, Proto-Indo-European, the language presumably ancestral to all Indo-European languages, was spoken by farmers in Anatolia around 9,000 years ago. When these farmers migrated to other parts of Eurasia and intermixed with the local populations, they imposed their language and culture upon the natives, leading to the development of distinct offshoots of Proto-Indo-European, which we today recognize as the individual branches of the Indo-European language family. The fact that the oldest known Indo-European language, Hittite, was spoken in Anatolia lends credit to the assumption that all Indo-European languages might have originated there. And seeing as farming spread to Europe from Anatolia, at first glance it appears plausible that alongside this revolutionary new way of life, a new language spread to the continent as well. The main issue with this hypothesis is that even though Hittite is attested quite early, from the 17th century BC onwards, the spread of farming into Europe took place much earlier, from the 7th millennium BC onwards. So there's a substantial gap between when Indo-European languages supposedly spread from Anatolia and when an Indo-European language is first attested there. So it is entirely possible that Indo-European languages were not yet spoken in Anatolia by the time the first farmers set out from there. Another issue with this theory is the status of Hittite itself and the branch within the Indo-European language family it belongs to. This branch is commonly referred to as Anatolian and is certainly related to the other Indo-European languages. It is unclear, however, how exactly it is related to them. In light of the absence of certain grammatical features and vocabulary, shared by most other Indo-European languages, it has been postulated that Hittite must have been the first to split off from the language ancestral to all Indo-European languages. This in turn led some scholars to believe that the Anatolian languages shouldn't be seen as a daughter language of Proto-Indo-European, but rather as a sister. The parent language which they presumably both developed from in this scenario is interchangeably referred to as either Pre-Indo-European, Indo-Anatolian or Indo-Hittite. This hypothesis will be of particular interest once we take a look at the two studies mentioned previously. But before we get to that, let us take a look at the Kurgan hypothesis, which until recently has been and probably still is the most prominent way of explaining the origin and the dispersal of the Indo-European languages. According to this theory, the ancestor of all modern Indo-European languages was spoken in the Pontic Caspian steppe around 6,000 years ago. Its speakers would have been steppe pastoralists, who primarily lived off of animal husbandry. They were also among the first people to domesticate the horse, giving them a huge advantage in terms of mobility compared to most other people of their time. 
It was this advantage, paired with the employment of horse-drawn wagons and chariots, that played a crucial role in the dispersal of the Indo-European languages throughout Eurasia, according to proponents of this theory. Similarly to the Anatolian farmers discussed previously, these steppe pastoralists left a tangible impact on the populations they interacted with in the archaeological record, in Europe most notably associated with the Bronze Age corded ware and the Belbica cultures. But in addition to the archaeological evidence, the linguistic analysis of early Indo-European vocabulary has provided strong indications that the early Indo-Europeans lived a lifestyle which fits better with the Kirken hypothesis and a dispersal during the Bronze Age. This includes terminology concerning animal husbandry, horses and wagons, but also some metals. The vocabulary also shows early contacts with speakers of Uralic languages, which were probably spoken in the forests just north of the steppe. Because of this combination of archaeological evidence and linguistic analysis, the Kurgan hypothesis has become the more popular one of the two. The theory's arguments have been augmented further by archaeogenetic findings of the last decade which have demonstrated that all Indo-European speaking populations in Eurasia carry differing amounts of steppe ancestry. This seemed to have settled the debate, with even Renfrey admitting that the Kirken hypothesis seems far more likely in light of the combined archaeological, linguistic and genetic evidence. That is until the aforementioned paper was published in 2023, claiming a dispersal of the Indo-European languages through what the study's authors called a hybrid model, combining aspects of both the Kurgan and the Anatolian hypotheses. According to the study, the ancestor of all modern Indo-European languages was most likely spoken around 8,000 years ago, that is around 6,000 BC. This is based on the comparison of 161 languages, 52 of which were classified as non-modern, that is languages that are no longer spoken in their recorded form today, such as Latin or Old English. Interestingly, the study's authors found that this ancestral language had already started to diverge from around 7,000 years ago, around 5,000 BC, suggesting that the different branches of Indo-European had started to develop earlier than previously thought. Comparing these findings with developments in the archaeological record and the genetic profile of contemporary individuals, the study found that ultimately, the speakers of this language can be traced back to the Caucasus. The authors claimed that early loanwords from Caucasian and Semitic languages support this theory further. According to this paper and in line with the established argument, the Anatolian branch of Indo-European was probably the first to split off and its speakers then moved westwards into Anatolia. Tocharian probably also diverged very early on, not much later than Anatolian. Greek, Albanian and Armenian soon followed, with the former two branches entering Europe via Anatolia rather than going through the steppe, explaining the relatively low levels of steppe ancestry in these groups. The study's authors could also confirm that Greek and Armenian shared a deeper connection to each other than to other branches of Indo-European, perhaps suggesting a period of joint development before splitting up. Following these early offshoots, speakers of the languages ancestral to Baltoslavic, Germanic, Celtic and Italic migrated north into the steppe and intermixed with the local inhabitants from around 5000 BC onwards. The study found that these branches probably developed alongside each other for a considerable amount of time before Baltoslavic was the first to split off. Interestingly, according to the model employed by the study, Italic was the next branch to split off, with Germanic and Celtic developing together for some time thereafter. This is in stark contrast to the fairly commonly held belief that Italic and Celtic share a relatively recent Italo-Celtic ancestor. Due to a lack of substantial similarities between Baltoslavic and the Indo-Aryan branch, the authors of the study suggest that speakers of the latter didn't participate in this migration but rather migrated to southern Asia directly from the Caucasus. This also contrasts with a commonly found view that sees Baltoslavic and Indo-Aryan to be more closely related to each other than to the Western and European languages. It should be mentioned that the exact time at which the individual branches split off is difficult to determine with the model employed by the study's authors, usually giving a time frame spanning several millennia. This means that Anatolian might have split off as early as 6600 BC or as late as 3400 BC. That being said, the studied authors tried to tie the divergence of the individual branches to migrations observable in the archaeological record or in the genetic data in order to narrow down when the specific branches diverged, though different interpretations remain possible. 
It should also be stated that just because individual branches of Indo-European had started diverging earlier than commonly thought, according to the findings of this study, this doesn't mean they were fully developed yet. On the contrary, at the beginning of these divergences, they were still very similar, perhaps almost identical, forming dialect continua with other branches rather than being truly distinct, unintelligible languages. This is consistent with the developments perceived in the historical record, with languages descending from Vulgar Latin still being somewhat intelligible today, roughly 2,000 years after they themselves started to diverge. Whilst the results of this study are intriguing and offer explanations for the peculiar status of Anatolian as well as Greek, Albanian and Armenian, and the relation between Balto-Slavic and Indo-Aryan, they are far from bulletproof. Whilst a homeland in the Caucasus could explain the absence of steppe ancestry and speakers of Anatolian languages, the timeline at which the individual branches split off from Proto-Indo-European, or Proto-Indo-Anatolian in this case, is much earlier than in commonly accepted models. But even if the timeline is accepted, the vast ranges given allow for different interpretations as to when and how the individual branches split off and how they got to where they eventually ended up being. Perhaps the next study we'll be taking a look at can shed more light on these issues. This study, called The Genetic Origin of the Indo-Europeans and published in the journal Nature in February 2025 by Lazarus et al., investigated much the same issue as the previous paper, but focused more on genetics rather than on linguistics supplemented by genetics. According to this paper, the Yamnaya culture, the archaeological culture which in the context of the Kurgan hypothesis was most often seen as being carried by the last speakers of Proto-Indo-European before its breakup, derived around 80% of their ancestry from what they termed the Caucasus Lower Volga Klein, a population that was characterized by admixture components from both Caucasus hunter-gatherers and so-called Eastern hunter-gatherers from Eastern Europe, including the steppe. This Klein, as the name suggests, stretches from the Northern Caucasus to the Lower Volga. It exhibits a latitudinal gradient. The southern end is characterized by higher Caucasus and lower Eastern hunter-gatherer admixture, while the northern end displays the opposite pattern. The admixture associated with this Klein can also be found in Armenia from around 4000 BC onwards, and in central Anatolia during the Bronze Age, which the study's authors connected with the Hittites. Based on the distribution of this admixture, the researchers suggest that a language ancestral to both the Anatolian and the other Indo-European languages was spoken by people carrying this admixture up until 4400 BC, just north of the Caucasus Mountains. Around this time, some of these people started migrating south, intermixed with other populations along the way, and eventually reached central Anatolia. Caucasus Lower Volga ancestry is first recorded in central Anatolia from the early Bronze Age onwards, around 2750 BC, indicating that this migration took a substantial amount of time. From around 4000 BC onwards, this ancestry is also gradually moving into the steppe, contributing significantly to the genetic makeup of the Seretni Sti culture, who would later develop into the Yamnaya culture. Based on this data, the authors of this paper assume a possible origin of the Indo-European language family in the vicinity of the Caucasus, similarly to the previous study. Where the studies differ, however, is in their timeline, although only relatively slightly, all things considered. Whilst the 2023 study by Haggerty et al. assumed that the ancestral Indo-European language already started breaking up around 5000 BC, the 2025 study posits this only started happening from 4400 BC onwards. That being said, according to a table in the Haggerty study, the breakup of Proto-Indo-European, or Proto-Indo-Anatolian, could have happened as late as 4700 BC, which would reduce the gap between the two timelines to only three centuries. Whilst the study's authors both agree on an early split of the Anatolian languages which moved into Anatolia from the east, the 2025 study has different theories regarding the other branches of the Indo-European language family. According to the study, these branches didn't split off from Proto-Indo-European until after their migration into the steppe and dispersed from there, whereas the 2023 study posited that Greek and Albanian entered Europe from Anatolia, while speakers of Indo-Aryan probably migrated to Asia directly from the Caucasus instead of via the steppe. In contrast to this, the 2025 paper argues that Greek and other Paleo-Balkan languages of Indo-European origin were brought to Southeastern Europe by people carrying Yamnaya ancestry from around 2500 BC onwards. The other European languages of Indo-European origin were dispersed via the expansion of first the Corded Ware and then the Belbica culture, 
whilst the Indo-Aryan languages were brought to Asia by groups carrying corded ware ancestry as well, according to the study's authors. So, whilst both papers agree that the Indo-European language family originated around the Caucasus and that Anatolians split off first and entered Anatolia from the east, they differ in regards to when the other branches split off, if some of them potentially also originated in the Caucasus, and which route they took to their eventual destinations. But what are your thoughts on these studies and the origins of the Indo-European language family in general? Let me know in the comments below, and if you want to support my research and get early access to these videos, as well as to academic essays written by yours truly, consider signing up to my Patreon, a link for which can be found in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and your support, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.